Uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, we are playing the white pieces today. So we have to move bishop to b4. So French defense win a while. So what did we play last time? We played the move pawn to e5. Let's go e5 again. Now pawn to c5. Now the, the main line win war would start after the move pawn to c3, uh, pawn to a3, bishop takes, pawn takes, then we go queen g4 and play it like this. But I, I like to show everyone some sort of different ideas here and there. So instead of going for this one, I might show you guys bishop d2, which is a slightly different uh, idea here for white, just to avoid some of the main lines. It's fairly simple to play as well. And quite easy. So I, I would definitely recommend bishop d2. Well, you ha have a look at bishop d2 if you want to avoid some of those queen g4 lines. Although the queen g4 lines, as far as I know, are, are quite good for white. So the idea of this is that if they take, we go knight to b5. Queen takes and we follow through with the move pawn to f4 here. We can always play knight d6 check later on. So this is fine. So I, th I think we just play knight check in this position. Force the king to go to f8 and play knight to f3. It's just very easy to play as white and it gives you a very pleasant position. Now knight g5 is also a threat in this, in this scenario. If knight f5 then I mean, we can just take it and black has many, many double pawns to worry about. I know there's a lot of chess players who ended up moving to Canada, but most of them, I think, switched to poker instead of chess. Pawn goes to h6. So this is, this is looking to stop the move knight to g5 clearly. But, okay, let's just castle. Okay, we will accept the double pawns and play knight takes d4. It's just a it's it's a slight edge for white here. It's should be enough to give us a lot of pressure. Okay, so I, I don't want to take any of these pieces because that would improve black's pawn structure. So I just want to move my pieces, just keep them there, improve my position with the move king b1, and then perhaps put pressure on d5 with bishop to d g2. So Anna is wanting me to take on c6. I think she also wants to play knight to a5, knight to c4. So what I might do is keep my bishop on this diagonal just because she might bring this knight into the c4 square. So I want this bishop just keeping an eye on the c4 square in case the knight ever goes there. But I also leave the option of bringing my bishop to f3. Rook to c8. So now we need a useful improving move. So if I move my bishop, almost certainly she will play the move knight to a5. Problem is I don't have that many improving moves here left. I can play c3, but it does weaken my position a little bit. Maybe I play a3.
Actually, I don't mind a3 because if the knight goes to a5, I have to move queen to b4 check, which would force the, the queens to be traded. And this would be favorable for me because I have a firm grip over d4. I was also considering the move knight to b3 in that previous position, but then a5, a4 is almost certainly going to come. There's also ideas of g4 here, but I, I um, don't want to play it just yet, just because my knight's being attacked, so maybe later. At the moment, really, I'm just waiting because black has to solve the problem of the king. Where's the king going? I mean, it looks like the king should go to g8 and then h7, but then g4 becomes very strong. King e7. I shouldn't think about king e7 that seriously. Maybe I bring my knight back to d6. It's actually super annoying on this square. I might do that. So knight's extremely difficult to get rid of. And before when the king was on f8, the knight on d6 wasn't necessarily that good. But now that the king's on e7, it's even stronger because black has no pieces that can get rid of it and also I can put pressure on this f5 pawn later say bishop d3, knight d6, g4 and the king's in the center as well so if the center opens up it's going to be way more favorable for white I'm not, I'm not too sure what black plays in this position. Knight d6 is a strong threat. So I guess knight d6 comes with temper. So let, let's play knight d6. Then bishop d3 also comes with temper. Let's play that. Now g4 also comes with temper. It's, it's very tempting just to, you know, throw everything here at the black king. I mean, it would make the most sense, I think, to play g4, but okay, g4, pawn takes f5, knight takes e5. Pawn takes bishop, queen takes, pawn takes. I mean, it looks pretty good. I mean, the queen can even take on h6. Everything just opens up. But seems like it should be fine. Or do we wait? So if we go here, takes. Maybe we can also play some waiting move. But then knight d4 comes. I, I don't. I don't particularly want to give black time to defend here. Is there any other moves we could play? There's also queen. Queen going backwards here to e1, h4. Also looks very good. 
Actually, I like Queen E1 a lot because Queen E1 actually defends the E pawn as well. So in lower positions, you are preparing G4 followed by F5. Let's go queen e1. So queen h4, king g7, pawn to g4, looks very strong. Just opening up everything. Yeah, looks looks very good. The rook is also hanging in a lot of positions, so the knight's unable to capture here. The g4 looks very good here. Just opening up the king side. Of queen f6 check and then maybe pawn to f5. Or pawn to f5 straight away is also possible. Might throw in the check. Also, a bishop takes g6 coming in a lot of positions. So bishop takes g6 or f5, probably f5. <laughs> There's just too many threads here. Can just take here. The rook is hanging as well. I have to be careful we don't take with the pawn here because rook c1 check would open up a discovery. On our queen, so we take with the rook, and here we can we can trade queens, and we're a piece up. For a lot of you, bishop d2. If you want to avoid the main line, Winua. I think there is a way here for black to equalize, as with most lines, but it's it's very easy to play from the white side. So I definitely suggest this uh, as white. Pawn to f4. Here knight to d6 check. So yeah, a lot of people go for this, but it just gives white a very comfortable advantage. So for example, after castle is here, already knight f5 is... I mean, it, it's, it's not 
a bad move it's actually one of the moves suggested which means that already black's position is very uncomfortable to play and most important thing here is that you don't capture on any of these squares which would improve black's pieces dramatically and yeah we're, we're really just sitting here waiting looking for an opportunity to improve our position um, so here I, I played a3 to stop this by the way if, if black tried to go here I'd go bishop queen to b4 takes takes let's say knight to c4 this type of position even if you take here should be a little bit better for you let's say you go c3 your knight is much better than the bishop so your king can just walk into the e3 square and you dominate the end game here you have the better pawn structure better piece as well but instead this position yeah with the king in the center we can attack the f5 pawn and then get a lot of initiative there that's a queenie one is actually the best move Okay, so g4 is also playable, but I, I thought g4 was a lot riskier. For example, going for something like this. You might just lose all your advantage if you do this. And apparently you do 0-0 zero, zero now after knight to e5. Because you're just giving away too many pawns. So you want to be careful that you don't give away your advantage. Yeah, but yeah, now once you get an f5, white is clearly winning. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this line of the French defense. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next game.